Hi, I'm Catherine Calder. I'm AC Newman. We're from the New Pornographers, and you're live in limbo. This is Live in Limbo. I'm Andreas Babiolakis, and with me we have members of New Pornographers, Catherine and Carl. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Very excited as we were just talking about your new album, World Bruisers. That's been going pretty well so far. With yeah, the new single getting great reception. Yeah, it's it's more uh, it's more a great reception, and in Canada particularly, we've uh, gotten more radio than we've ever gotten on anything else before. So that's cool. We never expect to be on the radio. <laughs> but that's surprising because some of your albums have been considered some of the best indie albums, some of the best in Canadian music history. You've got mentioned on Pitchfork's Best of the Decade list, mm -hmm. and this is only now that you're reaching this kind of plateau. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> you kind of reach the best, and you're going even better somehow. That's the that's the hope, you know. I, I, I mean, personally, I feel like I'm I'm always learning. Uh, with this new album, um, you say you pick things up along the way and you learn new things, and that's your approach to music as opposed to having like a set mind. Mm -hmm. um, what did you learn from this new album, or did you learn anything before this new album that helped you kind of bring it into fruition? I don't know. It's um, I know we must have learned something, but it's just so much of it is winging it. So much of it is just like putting your head down and working, and and when you hit it, you go, yes, that's it. And I don't really go in. We go into it with the vaguest, just the vaguest idea. Like, let's sound like that Sig Sig Sputnik song, or let's sound like Xanadu, or let's sound like. Johnny and Mary by Robert Palmer, yeah. and then other than that, th th they're just vague. Those are just like vague touchstones, and we're never even trying that hard to sound like that. We just, that's just currently what we're into. It's just a song we're currently obsessed with, right. and we, 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 just, we just start going. Uh, so I, I don't know what I've learned, but I hope I've learned something. <laughs> it seems like you have, because again, you've got all these accolades, and um, you're reaching this uh, popularity level even now, so it seems like you're still on the right path. Um, you say that you kind of just wing it with uh, the music creativity that you have. Um, does that mean that you have like a lot of fine tuning within the studio, or does that are you kind of comfortable with the first instinct and the first few tries that you have? Sometimes, sometimes you um, a song locks in immediately. Um, a lot of the time, you know. You start playing it, you think this is okay, but you know you're looking for that pixie dust. Yeah. You're like, like, well, I feel like with with each song in this record, like I wanted every song to have its own specific personality. Because sometimes when I'm writing a song, it just feels like a bunch of words and chords, and I think I don't want it to sound like a bunch of words and chords. I want it to sound like this very specific entity that's very unique. And and sometimes you find that immediately, and sometimes you should search for it, and sometimes you don't find it, and the record just gets knocked off the record yeah. because you just didn't find the specific voice you wanted. But it's um, yeah, it's like I said, it's very it's very much winging it. I wish there were, I wish there was a formula. If I could find the formula, I would put out like five albums a year. I would be spewing this stuff out. But then your stuff might be too calculated. It might ruin the magic of the new pornographers. Right? It might, but maybe it'd be more popular. I need that formula. Well, you're reaching popularity now, so maybe you've maybe you've hit it now, right? May maybe I feel like it. Um, I, I, I feel like we hit on this record. We hit something closer to what I've always wanted us to sound like. Oh yeah. Do you still feel that there's a bit of a distance to that sound you wanted to always achieve, or is this close enough where you feel comfortable with? Um, what, you've, what you've achieved with Pro Bruisers? I think it's pretty close. Pretty close. But, but at the same time, uh, I feel I feel really good about this record. But and it was fun to make, and it just makes me want to make another one. Yeah, it just makes me think like this. This record came off really well, so I should do another one. You know, maybe I can do it again. Exactly. Anything in the woodworks at this point, or is it way too soon for that? No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've been writing a lot of songs, but I mean, we'll see. I, I want to try. I want to try and start demoing songs. Yep. And there's still songs from this record that we haven't finished that I wouldn't mind 
finishing or reworking just for like an EP because they're you can always do stuff you exactly. know you can always do more stuff yeah uh, it's and, th and there are songs that because they were from these sessions I would never want to push them to the next record right because maybe nobody else feels that way but to me I feel like no this song is from this time so it should come it should come out at the same time absolutely uh, and we were just told that you were filming a music video yesterday, last mm -hmm. night, I believe. Are you able to talk about that, or is that like top secret stuff that we can't go into? It's. I guess we're not supposed to talk about it yet. All right, <laughs> fair enough. Um, we don't even know what it's going to look like, but it should look cool. But it should look. Good. It's, we, yeah, the director is Scott Cudmore, who's done some fucked up videos. I have to say fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's gonna. Well, it's the name of the band, right? Up videos. Yes. It's the yeah. name of the band. There you yeah. go. So then you have every every right to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He yeah he's done some cool fucked up videos. He did a great uh, video for Mets that we really liked. Cool. Um, and he's done others, of course. But yeah, he's very cool. That should be a interesting video. Should be good. Um, with the new album coming out on the twenty fifth, um, do you have a lot that you have planned? like tour date wise or even like music video wise like do you have a lot of that kind of in blueprint or is that again something that you kind of win and see, we'll see. what happens yeah i don't i don't know if there's gonna be any more i hope there's more videos cause it's fun to make videos unfortunately they're not the cheapest thing to make no mm -hmm. so hopefully the we can get some more grants we do another one or find somebody who will make a video very cheaply um yeah well, i mean we have a lot of, we have are touring pretty much booked through the end of the year. I mean, we're, we're just doing festivals for the next couple months. And beginning of October, we start our main tour, and that's for about six weeks or something. And that ends at the end of November, and we're um, the first 10 days of December, we're going to Europe. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, we get back, and we might do some more touring in January. I know. I'm, I just want to get. I just want to get through that. Yeah. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have a. I have a strange relationship with touring, and the, it's a great thing to do, and uh, and I love it. But you know, I currently don't want to be away from home that much. It's like a kid. And oh yeah. I don't don't want to be. He's two and a half, and I don't want to be the absentee father. No. Oh, yeah, I understand. One hundred percent. There's so, a good balance. I think you can strike. Yeah. You know, you can be a bit. When the band is in the position that we are, you can be a bit choosier about what you want to do and what you don't want to do and boundaries. You know, I think when you're a younger band, you kind of just have to take every opportunity. Yeah. Or at least that's how you feel. You're young, you have a lot of energy, you don't care if you're away from home, it doesn't matter. There's no significant others to, to kind of work around or, you know, it's more, it's a little bit more free. Um, I don't know what my point is, except that it's good. <laughs> Maybe it's conducive to more conducive to family lifestyle. Well, I don't know. well, one great thing is it's like uh, <laughs> the the good and bad side of it is like when when I'm there, when I'm not there, I'm not there at all. Yeah. You know, but when I'm there, I'm absolutely there. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that you know, the, you know, so far it's like for the first two and a half years of his life, I've been there like most of the time. Right. And I think I'm, I'm lucky that, like, you know, I guess a lot of kids don't have their parents there, like, you know, nearly full time for them. So that's, that's been nice. And that's been part of being a musician. So now, so now I'm approaching on, like, the other side of it where, like, yeah, I have to leave you for, you know, five yeah. or six weeks. Yeah. Or even weeks. That's not so bad, then. It's not, yeah. I thought it was once, it's not, it's not so bad. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think I'll get through it. Mm -hmm. They all get through it. <laughs> it should be fine. It's tricky though because um, new pornographers have been around for uh, since the late '90s, and um, obviously it's still an integral part of both of your lives. Um, you joined in 2005, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, ten years, over ten years on your end, um, it's still a massive part of both of your lives. But now that you've got these um, other aspects of your life, these new chapters entering. Um, do you see new pornography still going on for a while, or is that something that you think you could balance pretty easily, or do you think it's something that you feel might kind of um, be something that you want to put to rest a little bit? Do you think it, this band's going to go on for a while, or? I, you know, I think it will. I mean, mainly because I personally, I just, I just love like it's just like a plat. It's just this amazing platform. Yeah. Like, I, like I want to make music, and like I've been blessed with this amazing platform where like 
it can make music and like people want to hear it. Yes, yes, and we do. So and it's it's and it's even like going. I'm sort of known as a solo artist, but a lot less so. You know, yeah, <laughs> like. I can take the same song and it's worth so much more. It's a new pornographer song that it is one of my solo songs, which maybe doesn't. <laughs> I think it sounds way too pragmatic, but and, and and I feel like this band has always been sort of part time. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I could even see at some point the band just eventually morphing into a studio project where we just don't play that much. Right. Which is not it's not that different from what it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do take your time because it was four years since the last mm -hmm. album. Yeah. Which is good because if quality over quantity, 100%. And um, as, as you said, it seems like it's something that uh, doesn't take up all of your time. It feels a little bit like a side project almost, but it's not. But it's a super group in, in a sense of the word where a lot of people come from various projects and amalgamated to one. So do you find that that's kind of the success to the band? Not necessarily all these different ideas, but the fact that you have a lot of time apart and, and then when you have time together, a lot of this creativity flows. Yeah, I think there might be something to that. Yeah, and, and yeah, we, we have a lot of time apart, so it's like, there's not a, you know, it's not yeah. that weird thing where you can't stand each other. Right, exactly. Where like, I, th I think there's a lot of bands that are just like pretending to like each other, you know, for Public. And we absolutely love each other. <laughs> and you can't make a record like that. You can't make a record when you can't stand each other. Guns I don't Rose's believe. Tried. What? Guns N' Roses try. Yeah, you can try. <laughs> you can try to do it, but it will always come across that there's something. And maybe, and maybe, like there's the occasional record that where that happened and it was a great thing. But I find that I find it hard to believe because I, I mean it, it must be rare because you know you need to be. In close quarters, you can't be fighting. It's distracting. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're having arguments with people all the yeah. time, or there's a lot of tension, it's just distracting. So how can you possibly focus on what's going on in the music? And how could anybody have an honest opinion or an honest relationship with the music when there's all this other nonsense going on? So mm. that's not that's luckily <laughs> <laughs> luckily not not what's going on. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the key to the new pornographer's success because again, you've had all these accolades and you have this huge following for this new album, World Bruisers, which is out on the 25th, I believe. Yes. It's coming out a day earlier, right? Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are waiting in anticipation for this album. There's a huge hype behind it. So, um, that's good. I guess that's the key to success. No fighting, um, <laughs> kind of winging it. Good but balance. Exactly, good balance. Yeah, winging, slight wing. Just all the humane kind of aspects to what music can be and not all the systematic kind of elements. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for joining me. It was an absolute privilege. And you can listen to Grow Boosters when it's out on the 25th. And I'm with Carl and Catherine of New Pornographers. Again, it's been an absolute privilege. And thank you so much for this. Yeah.